What's going on? Welcome back to On Texas Football Tuesday Recruiting Breakdown. I'm CJ Vogel, joined by the man, of course, and the little moving HQ over here on the road, Jerry Hamilton. I know you're headed up to DFW. you got a few stops coming up. We won't disclose too much of that info just now, but we will talk recruiting because there will be more recruiting updates coming. There were plenty of recruiting updates uh, over the weekend. We'll start with Michael Terry here in a sec, dive into some of the out-of-state official visitors coming in. We dialed up some interesting numbers with where Texas has gone on the out-of-state front over the last three cycles as well. So we'll dive into that. Of course, that June 1st elite camp is growing by the day, by the minute almost. Uh, Some really, really talented prospects coming in on that front, 26 and 27, a few 28s as well, but more so in that 26 and 27 classes at the moment. Um, But Jerry, I know you got to hit the road here soon, uh, but we got a good update for you coming up on the recruiting breakdown. Before we dive into uh, the first update, which will be Michael Terry, Jerry, do you mind uh, just giving us a quick read on uh, Mark Saunders and our awesome sponsor this week for the recruiting breakdown? Yeah, when it comes to protecting all your stuff, wouldn't it be great to have one place that protects it all? Here's some great news, Texas fans. Texas Allstate agent Mark Saunders is the only insurance agent you'll need to help keep tabs on protection for all your stuff, all of it, home, car, boat, to your motorcycle, RV, and even that ATV if you got one. Give Texas Allstate agent Mark Saunders' office a call today. That number is 512-218-8571. Are you in good hands? I'll tell you this. You'll be in great hands with Mark Saunders and his over 35 years experience. Again, give him a call today and do what so many other on Texas football fans have done. Call Mark Saunders, 512-218-8571. Mark Saunders will get you taken care of. That's Texas All-State agent Mark Saunders, the sole sponsor of the Recruiting Breakdown. Perfect. Thank you, Jerry. And thank you, Mark Saunders, for sponsoring this recruiting breakdown this week on a beautiful Tuesday. Uh, talk about being in good hands. Texas finally uh, you know, was able to secure an official visit from Michael Terry, one of the guys that we get asked about the most on the board right now and wow. where Texas sits at the moment. He's locked in that official visit. Jerry, you broke that news uh, yesterday morning. What's the latest there and what are your thoughts on his official visit date? Yeah, I think he's one of the more interesting prospects in the state of Texas in this cycle and for Texas fans and probably for A&M fans and now for Oregon fans where he was last weekend. Nebraska official visit, I don't think he's going there. Uh, I think it's Oregon, Texas or Texas A&M at the end of the day. Oregon's were the school he grew up liking the most as a kid. Will he go that far away from home? We'll see. Um, But he's one of the more interesting prospects, CJ. You went to see him in person um, is because you don't really know what he's going to play. But he's so tantalizing because he's 6'2 and a half, 218, ran 10'8. He's one of the better athletes in the country, pound for pound, period. He plays everywhere from running back, the corner, the safety, uh, to wide receiver, outside receiver in high school at Alamo Heights there. But he's, tif- he's difficult for us and college coaches to project and recruit because he wants to play wide receiver. That's the preferred position. That's not the only position, that's the preferred position. But he doesn't really project there. He projects more to a Amari Nyblack tied in or an outside linebacker. And I think there's a difference in saying linebacker, CJ, and outside linebacker. You say linebacker, that's an instinctive position. Outside linebacker where you can use your athleticism and rush off the edge may be more of a future home for him on the defensive side of the ball because you saw him in person. I'm going to let you talk about this. He's 6'2 and a half, 218 with long arms. And he plays multiple sports. He's going to be 230 plus pounds. You you aren't going to be able to keep the weight off of him. Yeah, that's exactly it. You know, you look at him right now and you see a great frame. I mean, tantalizing is probably the best word for him. And I, I, I walked into that weight room in Alamo Heights earlier in February. And I mean, immediately he stands out amongst that group, right? He's, he's got a great build, great length. uh, And then you watch him work out and, you know, you just have to imagine how much more weight he will gain once he gets into a weightlifting program that, you know, is designed to add weight to get that body right for the college level right now. And this isn't a knock on Alamo Heights because they've had great success with him, but it's just not designed to necessarily build strength. It's there to keep you in shape and keep you ready for whatever next season you are participating in because most of those kids down there play multiple sports of course he was ready for a track meet later that afternoon in which I was down there and 10-8 Jerry I mean at that size it just adds to the mystique Uh, I liked what coach Renneman had to say about him whenever I visited of course you know we don't 
view him as one specific position. You know, when we're out there practicing, we have to use him all over the field on both sides of the football because that's just the kind of player that he is. And to your point, I mean, it makes things difficult when evaluating and projecting where he'll best fit at the next level. So it kind of muddies the water with where and how teams come in and recruit him uh, specifically. He told me last night, actually uh, pretty late in the night, that he's being recruited as an athlete for Texas, which I think isn't a surprise to anybody. But to your point again, if he wants to be recruited as a wide receiver, how much of that plays into where these top schools fit for him right now. I have to imagine every other school that's in this recruitment is looking at, Hey, you know, we kind of have to figure this out as we go later on in this recruitment. Yeah, no doubt. And look, I think Sarkeesian from the person I talked to close to recruitment uh, told me yesterday, Sarkeesian has been really upfront. He's like, look, we think you could play four positions and we're not going to know which one you'll settle at until you're here. I think that's the great approach to take for Texas on this recruitment because the reality is, think about what we've talked about with him. He wants to play wide receiver. We don't think he's a wide receiver. He could prove us and all the college coaches wrong, right? He could be the rare guy. Not likely. Could he be Maury Nyblak as a tight end? Because Nyblak was a receiver hybrid coming out of high school that projected the tight end, right? I mean, similar athlete, similar frame. Nyblak's going to be 6'3" and change in 238, 240 pounds when he gets the combine and run four five. As a playmaker, as moves like a wide receiver, playing tight end, not an inline tight end. Outside back where you can just rush the quarterback with all that athleticism and length, right? I mean, so there's he's got multiple positions, multiple chances to have success. And, and I think Sarkeesian's right. I mean, yeah, who knows? He could grow into an edge guy. You, you just right. don't know. I mean, how dissimilar is his frame to Colin Simmons, CJ, when you saw Colin Simmons? I mean, I he could end up with a 250, 255-pound edge rusher, too. You just don't know. But what you do know is he's one of the elite athletes pound for pound in the country with that frame. So Texas, Texas A&M, and Oregon are sitting here saying, we'll figure it out when you get here. Let's right. just start there. Let's have a visit. Let's sit down and talk about it, and then we'll figure it out. Absolutely. So, he, I mean, at the end of the day, he is a playmaker. At the end of the day, he is one of those guys that you'd prefer to have on your roster, right? You'd want to see where you can kind of project and mold that talent down the road. Obviously, just does kind of make things difficult on the recruiting trail. But we're going to pivot over to the official visitors list because right now Texas is sitting at 45 by my count. Uh, A lot of guys coming in from out of state right now, 20 official visitors coming from the out-of-state mark. And looking at some of the numbers from previous cycles, and I did the math from 2023 to 24 to 25, you know, Texas had 17 official visitors from out-of-state in 2023. Then they went really broad on the out-of-state market in 2024. 27 out-of-state visitors in 2024. Right now they're sitting at 20 in this current cycle for 25. Of course, A lot of that effort, almost half of them, 45% coming from California. And this has been the kind of growth that we've seen Texas take on the out-of-state market. Of course, whenever you look at it from 2024, they had up to eight or nine different states in terms of where they were recruiting, kind of out on the trail, getting kids to come in for official visits. Right now, California has nine of those 20 out-of-state kids. And we've talked about it at length in the past, Jerry. That's where most of this recruiting effort is coming from right now. Uh, When you talk about it, I mean, the Josiah Sharmas, I mean, Marcus Harris, all these big guys coming in. Uh, Let me get your thoughts first on how Texas has branched out and kind of picked their own pockets in the out-of-state marks for uh, official visitors. Yeah, so I think Sark did a great job assembling a staff that was set up to recruit East in the SEC region when he was hired at Texas. Look, I mean, did did they absolutely know it was going to be the SEC? Maybe. Uh, but he assembled a staff that was strong in Louisiana, and that goes all the way down to Brandon Harris, who's now the role of general manager. Um, but Bo Davis, Terry Joseph, right? I mean, uh, one of the Hanktons was on the staff in the support staff role. Um, Jeff Banks has recruited everywhere from Florida, um, to Arizona, to Texas, right? And he, he's recruited everywhere. It stops at Texas A&M and Alabama, Arizona. But really this California surge, um, yes, Steve Sarkeesian's part of that being a SoCal guy. Yes, bringing in Chris Jackson at modern day uh, may have given that a little boost, but it's really Johnny Nansen. I mean, Johnny Nansen is coached at USC, UCLA, and Arizona. That's his last three stops. He is recruited in Arizona West in the California for two decades. 
He has more connections and knows more people in the state of California than just about anybody Texas could have hired. So he goes, what does he do? He goes right up to Folsom and offers Josiah Sharma, who's committed to Washington at the time. Right now, that's Alabama or Texas for Josiah Sharma. Oregon will get a visit. It's going to be one of those three, but I think Alabama and Texas. Um, then you see the linebackers, Madden for Amo, uh, If I won't pronounce the guy's name right, name right, Mataya Togoi, who's committed to USC, both scheduled to come in in June. I mean, those are uh, visitors that Texas would not have had coming to campus without Johnny Nansen's hire. So that is the difference to me is Johnny Nansen's ties in California. That didn't mean Joe, Jeff Choate didn't do a really good job, but he didn't have as strong a ties in California as Johnny Nansen. And then you look at the future of Texas recruiting. And it's actually interesting they had more official visitors from out of state last year versus this year. A couple of IMG guys, an IMG guy from Texas, right? I mean, so, mm-hmm. but we do think Texas will add a couple more out of state official visitors. That number could creep up to 22 or 23. Texas is still trying to get Adonis Curry to corner, four star corner out of Cortill and Lancaster to officially visit. Um, Derry Norris out of Florida, possibly, right? And a couple other guys. So, uh, te- Texas is going to add a couple of official visitors, but the, the, the change now, with Tashard Choice being the hire in, uh, when Stan Drayton got the Temple job, Kenny Baker when Bo Davis moved on to LSU, even more of an emphasis in Georgia and Florida moving forward. So Sark has established Texas as a national recruiting program, um, especially in that 23 and 24 class. That's where Texas made the big jump. And now in 25, it's going to be more of it with more focus in California, more for- focus in Georgia, and more focus in Florida. Uh, So I think those are the three states. If you're going to recruit a lot out of state, you recruit Southern California because we'll see what if the kids want to stay home in future years as USC and UCLA are playing in the cold weather Big Ten and Oregon. That's a big change for those schools and those kids in SoCal. And then with Kenny Baker and Choice work in Georgia and work in Florida, you have two sets of feet on the ground in those states. And Kenny Baker has connections in Georgia, having grown up there. His father was a coach in that state. So if there's three states you want to hammer away at, those are the three. And then you spot recruit in Louisiana. You spot recruit in Alabama a little bit. You lost some of that when Bo Davis went to LSU. Spot recruit in Mississippi, maybe. Uh, But Texas is in the right, the correct states. And then you spot recruit in Arizona. They're in the correct states to maximize recruiting at the University of Texas under Sarkeesian. And his hires have even brought more to that with Tashard Choice, Kenny Baker, and Johnny Nansen. Yeah, speaking of, you know, no more trips to Arizona. I mean, Texas, they had three official visitors in 23 and 24 in that state. None so far. That's not to say Texas is done in Arizona. It just, it just matters. It matters what level that state is on it. Because on some years, it's not going to every year is not going to have six guys that are national prospects right. that everybody wants to come visit if you're Texas, right? There may be a class where there's none of those. You got those kids in in January and took a look at them and said, eh, we're going to, we, we like somebody else better. Uh, but Texas will dabble in Arizona. Like you said, it's just, that may be more class to class than every year. And Texas was out in Arizona for both the, the winter and the spring evaluation sessions. Yeah. I know coach Troy's coach getting, they were out there at desert pines, uh, yes. or Desert Edge seeing Jamar Bill Goins, who ended up committing to Texas a and Texas saw him probably three times this spring, never extended an offer. I think that's because they just kind of preferred the other options at the moment, of course. But I did want to hit on Georgia real quick because yeah. that is the spot. Hey, can I stop been- you real quick before we hit on Georgia? We need to add, you're going to see Texas in Nevada more because of Johnny Nansen as well. Las Vegas, Landon McComber. Their linebacker out of Bishop Gorman's now officially visiting the 14th through 16th. Nansen has a lot of ties. Tia Savea, he recruited out of Desert Pines to UCLA, right? Then transferred to Arizona. You're going to see Johnny Nansen work Las Vegas as well because there's about three pocket schools in that area that produce Texas level players in every class. Sorry, CJ, go ahead. I forgot to say that earlier and I wanted to make sure we mentioned that Las Vegas area. Yeah, uh, I think that's actually the first Nevada official visitor since Anthony Jones back You're right, 100%. in 2021, 2022, yep. I, I believe. Yep. So worth noting there, of course. But to Georgia, this is the spot where we've talked about all offseason, where Texas is going to increase their recruiting efforts. To me, it's all about the kids that they are recruiting in Georgia. 
Right. You know, they only have three official visits set from kids in Georgia. They had three in 2023. They had one a year ago. But when you look at the kids that Texas is starting to recruit now, here are the names in 2023. Justin Benton ended up at Houston. Tyler Scott, Auburn, Raul Aguirre at Miami. Now you go a year after. Daniel Calhoun came down to Texas and Georgia. Georgia shut the door and said, no, yeah. sir, you're not leaving uh, the yeah. state. Yeah. Now Kevin Wynn, Emory Winston, who's already in the class, and Devin Williams, who's committed to Auburn. It's a different level of Georgia kids that I think that they're recruiting, more so kids that Georgia's fighting to keep in state rather than seeing, uh, obviously, the three in 2023 that all departed out of state. What do you, I, I wanted to get your thoughts on that specifically. Yeah, so I, I think this. Anytime you get into the OLDL in the Atlanta area in South Georgia, Georgia's going to fight like hell to keep those guys from going to Texas, just like they did Alabama after Kirby Smart got hired. And that's what happened with Daniel Calhoun. Texas finished second, but they weren't getting him. I mean, they had a great visit. They liked it. One happening. Now watch how much Georgia tries to turn the heat up on Kevin Wynn. Because before they were hot and cold, they think he's a very good player, but there's so many D linemen in Georgia, and Georgia's also recruits nationally. Um, watch now. Georgia's going to try to turn the heat up on Kevin Wynn now. Uh, if it's FSU or South Carolina, eh, okay. But if it's Texas moving into the SEC and they come in to Greensboro 40 minutes from Athens and get a four-star defensive lineman that could have a pro football future, that's a little different for Kirby Smart. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that is that is the thing to watch. Now, South Georgia, different, I think. But there's certain areas, Atlanta, anywhere around that Athens area, where if Texas goes in, and targets a top offensive or defensive lineman, that's where the dogfight's going to be. Uh, now, Devin Williams is committed to Auburn, right? So that Auburn has had so much success in the Atlanta area. What Texas will face with Auburn is Auburn will try to shut the door after that June 14th through 16th visit and to get them to shut down the Texas visit. So, but Georgia on the bigs is what you're concerned with. Then Auburn who recruits that Atlanta area so effectively for so many years, if you're going head-to-head -head with them on the same guys, uh, what I think we'll see in the future, CJ, is Texas get these kids to campus earlier. Like uh, uh, we'll, we'll talk about a couple of 2026s coming in in June for elite camp. Texas has to get these kids on campus earlier to ensure they can come back and get the official visit in June. Yeah, and that's actually a good segue because that June first official visit, or uh, sorry, uh, elite camp list is growing by the day. We have you know 25, 30 names at the moment on Texas football, yeah. some really talented guys. And I think you know for me specifically, it's that offensive line group in twenty six that's stealing the show, and yeah. then that group of running backs. Uh, we've yeah. talked about Tashar Choice's efforts. I mean, he starts them young, and you start looking at this group. Uh, specifically in the 27 class. I mean, Wayne Shanks, Jacoby Dixon, Landon Call uh, Williams Callis. I mean, those are some really talented running backs. Of course, uh, we, we'll see Racing Guillory back on campus as well. Uh, I mean, my goodness, Jerry, this is a yeah. good group. It's going to be talented. We haven't quite seen this group of talent coming in for the elite camp in previous years, plus quarterback stealing the show. What stands out to you? Is it the big offense alignment, or are you going in, into the skill guys? No, it's quarterback first because okay. – Look, I, here's what I think the reality is. Um, Diabell and Troy Hune are, are coming in to work out for Steve Sarkeesian June 1st, and Texas will make a decision on who's one and who's two at that time. I know there's some, there's some speculation. Texas likes one guy more than the other. And I, I, they're going to roll the ball out on June 1st and let these guys compete and Sark to watch, watch these guys compete. That's what's going to happen at quarterback. And Texas has two tremendous options there. And both of those guys, I think, if Texas makes them the number one guy, I think may pick Texas. I I know there's a lot of talk out of American Heritage about LSU and Penn State, more Penn State with Diabell. Uh, Texas is the pl first place he's going in June. Um, he has LSU scheduled June 13th or 14th, nothing with Penn State yet. doesn't mean he won't. But we'll see what happens at Tech. Texas is a very quarterback-friendly place for a quarterback recruit. With all the talent coming in, the wide receivers moving to the SEC. So I think that's where I'm starting. Then offensive line, Brett Colage and Keeney Pepe at that Pepe from uh IMG, the two top all OLs and 26 at IMG coming back or coming on campus. Colage was there in April. Uh, this will be Pepe's first time on campus, two of the tops in the country. Toa Katoa is supposed to be back. I believe Turntine will be back. We'll wait for confirmation on that. Uh, but 2026 on the offensive line is going to have some guys 
there. Um, and if they don't make it in that weekend, they'll be back. They'll be there June uh, 13th. I, I think that's the weekend that the OLDL guys come in. But then, CJ, you talked about Chris Stewart, the receiver from Shadow Creek, very talented 26 receiver who Texas Chris Jackson offered very early. He'll be on campus. Uh, and then the D- DBs now. I mean, look, Jermaine Bishop as a corner receiver athlete out of Willis is tremendous. As his frame fills out, he, he's a top 50, 100 kid in the country, very talented player. And then uh, we talked about in Georgia, Zalus Hicks, the safety out of Carrollton High. He was on campus for seven on seven in April. I believe that's when we saw him there, right, CJ? And that's what we we're talking about. Now he's coming back June 1st for elite camp. So Texas gets to get him on campus twice. That early, that almost brings you, gets you that official visit for sure uh, before senior year if you continue on the path with him. Uh, so I think we're going to see this list build out, CJ. I think we're going to see a lot of out-of-state kids uh, come in either June 1st or the two weekends after that 13th, 14th weekend. Texas is going to – what last season did, they're going to get more guys on campus at a younger age so they can truly evaluate those guys. I'll let you talk about the running backs because what's going to happen with that is the short choice – you're going to know who he likes in 27 after this camp based on how much Texas is really going after these guys to start the season. Yeah, this is a really talented group. Uh, Lenny uh, williams Callis. I mean, that's a guy that ran 10-5-9 as a freshman this spring. Uh, we've talked about Xavier Crowell from Alabama in the past. He visited in the early spring. I believe it was the last week of March was when he was on campus. Uh, but that's another kid, Jerry, that – Great speed. You turn on the tape and you say, how in the world is this kid a freshman? Uh, of course, Wayne Shanks, track kid, 10-8, yeah. uh, and Jacoby Dixon, who uh, was the district MVP as a Very true freshman good. this year. So we're looking at two really talented groups of running backs in 2026 and 2027, uh, both with a lot of in-state guys as well. But that's not going to stop, obviously, to start yeah. choice from going out and finding his big guy. I did want to add a couple names, and I'm looking at the list now. Offensive lineman from Florida, defensive back from Georgia, two wide receivers from California. Texas, again, kind of continuing this trend that we're seeing right now in the 2025 class with where they're recruiting specific positions out of state and looking around the uh, the country there. Uh, one name I did wanted to add was Jamie on Martin. He's coming in with yeah. his high school quarterback, Cole Taylor, a two-sport athlete out of Pflugerville. Martin has been in communication with Texas almost daily, dating back to earlier this spring, him and Jeff Banks. I stopped by up there. First offseason for Martin in which he's specifically focusing on football and the yeah. weight training and the conditioning. That's big. He's a two-sport guy with basketball, now giving up basketball to focus specifically on football. I would not be surprised if that is the an offer candidate that we see leaving that camp. 6'4", yeah. 240, got to fill up that body a little bit, rearrange some rate. But really talented group. And, of course, Jerry, we mentioned the 26 quarterbacks. There's a couple 27 quarterbacks coming in, leading the way is Weston Nielsen at a bass trap. So big time uh, uh, visit weekend and opportunity for Texas to get a pretty good start on the yeah. 26 and 27 classes. And of course, if history repeats itself, and we've seen it the last three cycles, uh, it might not be too long after that camp before we see a 26 quarterback make wow. their decision and begin that class. Um, uh, yeah, I'll be surprised if the 26 quarterback Commitment is not in the class in June. I, I'll be very surprised if that doesn't happen. I think um, I think both of those guys would like to have a decision in June. Uh, so we'll see which way that we'll, we'll see which way that goes. Absolutely, but that'll about do it for today's recruiting breakdown. Jerry, one more time, do you mind yeah. uh, giving us a a quick reminder about Mark, Mark Saunders and our good friends over at Allstate? Yeah, when it comes to protecting all your stuff, wouldn't it be great to have one place that protects it all? Here's some great news. Texas Allstate agent Mark Saunders is the only insurance agent you'll need to keep tabs on protection for all your stuff. That's your home, motorcycle, RV, ATV, car, boat, all of it. Call Texas Allstate agent Mark Saunders' office today, 512-218-8571. I guarantee you this, with his over 35 years of experience, you'll be in great hands with Texas alum Mark Saunders. If not, just ask some of the OTF family who's who's made the call to Mark Saunders. That number is 512-218-8571. Thank you for being the sole sponsor of the Recruiting Breakdown. Yep. Thank you, Mark Saunders and Allstate. And thank you, Jerry. I know you got to hit the road. Yep. Uh, but for today's recruiting breakdown, make sure to go follow us and join the community on texasfootball.com. Become an OTF OG. Of course, we've got plenty of updates coming. You're going to see uh, some pretty important stars up in the DFW area, some good uh, 
content and details and updates coming up in a few, uh, you know, a couple of days as well. But uh, for Jerry Hamilton, I'm CJ Bogle. This has been on Texas football on this week's recruiting breakdown. Welcome.